Hey guys, how you doing? This is Osamo here, and I got Paul in the studio. What's up, Paul? Hey, brother. It's good to be here today. Yeah. I just want to send a special blessing to everybody out there today. We ask that the Lord just bless you guys from the crown of your head to the yes, soles of your feet. Father, I ask that you pour your blood upon everybody yes, else, whatever Lord. they're going through, their finances, or whatever they're going through with their kids, their health, uh, mm. questions and prayers they've been asking you for, Lord. I just ask that you just give them the desires of their heart yes, and bless Lord. them, Lord. In Jesus' name. Mm. So what's going on on the earthquake front, brother? Well, as far as the earthquakes, you know, we had the uh, Italy earthquake that happened mm. over the weekend. And, what was uh, that? A, what, what was that? A five, six? What was it was a, a, a six point wow. something. It was a wow. pretty big one. And wow. uh, there was, uh, I guess, uh, there was several people that got actually killed. Mm. And uh, it was a pretty powerful one. Mm. A lot of a lot of structure, a lot of artifacts, buildings. You know, in Italy got destroyed and stuff like that. But uh, you got to understand that their their construction wise, I think it's 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 kind of pretty old. So mm. that's why these things happen. And we haven't heard about six pointers for quite a while since since the Japan earthquake. I mean, that's the last one that was pretty big like that. Or I know it's bigger than that. I mean, the yeah. one in Japan, but six is like something you know something to yeah. talk about. That's yeah. pretty yeah. wow. Well, actually, you know, talking about six and stuff, uh, we have that still in Japan, and we have wow. it down in uh, uh, Sumatra and uh, what is it, uh, New Guinea, and so forth. But uh, enough talk, talk on that here. I'll show you this show chart us. to see what's what's happening here mm. and here. Here's the chart as far as uh, what's happening in the world right now, as far as earthquakes in here. So, as you can see, that all the big ones are happening. Like here's one here down off of uh, Costa Rica. Well, it's a 4.2, and then there's one here in Mexico. No, Southern California. Mm. Uh, exactly six hours ago. Uh, see here, it looks like a four point something mm. that happened here. So that's that's new. Is that um, new from that? And then Baja Mexico, well, four point in Southern California. I wonder where that is. It says. Uh, 4.0 now 4.0 is pretty big um, for Southern California. It's not for a while, and so I'm I'm surprised we didn't felt that, huh, brother? But mm. uh, maybe it hit off of the ocean or maybe east of us or um, something. Yeah, Southern California. So, is that then Chula Vista or San Diego? Um, or I'm trying to find out here. Here, it's exact, exactly six hours ago. Here it is. Uh, let's see here. 4.0. Um, let's see. Ooh, it's a borderline between San Diego and Mexico. I wonder if that was Chula Vista, because that's right on the border over there. Yeah, it might be. Let's see here. Uh, let's see if I can uh, zero in for you folks here. Uh, let's see, there it is. That's where the earthquake is. Does it have a name? Um, it's like a borderline between. Right off across the border. I don't, I don't know exactly where that is. But it mm -hmm. looks like it's more inland off the 8. Mm -hmm. So uh, this just happened. Near La Mesa as, maybe? Yeah. looks like it's a little bit past La Mesa. But it's more definitely Chula Vista. But more inland off the 8. Mm -hmm. so, Bobby so, Connor. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's where that, that earthquake's happening on there. But as far as the rest of the world... A lot of the big ones are happening are, are more like in this side here, like uh, Japan. Well, 4.6 isn't huge, but... And uh, Taiwan, uh, 3.7. Uh, 4.5, New Guinea. Uh, let's see here. Um, Indonesia, 4.8. And then you got a whole bunch in Turkey, a 3.2.8 uh, mm. there. Uh, let's see, a 3.1 there. Uh, Northern uh, Italy, a 3.8 there. Uh, let's see, Poland, a 3.3 there. And then here's the global map as far as what's happening here. And you can you can see uh, what's happening there. And uh, see, there's the uh, 4.8. Huh, interesting. 4.8 there in the United States. I wonder where that is. And uh, let's see here, Japan. This is this must be Japan off the shore. Japan here. Um, looking over here. Let's see here. Wow. No, stop. Okay. Looks like uh, right off of here. Actually, this is Alaska. 
And then um, looks like Japan's right down here. And this is you can tell where the Ring of Fire is, brother, right mm -hmm. here. Look at all these little, mm -hmm. all these earthquakes happening there. Wow. It seems like the whole half of the the globe or the Ring of Fire is like uh, basically earthquakes. Wow. Look at look at all that, man. Look wow. like it's like all around here. Wow. All around here. But wow. then you look here, there there was hardly anything that popped up there. And now these these uh charts here what you see here these are like either between the four points the five and the 6.0 earthquakes so these these aren't small earthquakes these are pretty actually pretty large earthquakes that are happening mm. so look at all that wow tons of them wow i wonder where uh let's see is it a 4.8 earthquake in here somewhere i wonder where where that one is but uh that must be new can see that, but uh, right there, I wonder where that is. Uh, doesn't say exactly where it is, but uh, as you can see, that there was a close to five 4.0. Is that earthquake. off of uh, South America? No, no, this is United States. Oh, it's still the United States. The United okay. States. So that has to be pretty close by where um, this earthquake was on that. Um, let's see here, it doesn't tell us much on that, but. Uh, hmm. But there it is. You can see that. Uh, I wasn't making that up on as far as the earthquake. I'm surprised it didn't show up over here, brother. Mm. Um, so these are two separate type of uh, earthquake maps to tell you what's happening here. So I use both of them just to give us more of a detail. But uh, it's interesting. It's not pop it could be Texas or Oklahoma. That's mm. what I'm thinking of. Because mm. it looks like it's more towards there. Because here's Florida. So it's close to there. It looks like Texas to me. Wow. So something happened in there. Wow. But anyway, uh, moving on, um, what you got, brother? Well, I, I know I wanted to talk today a little bit on uh, prosperity and what's be, being taught in the churches. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm all for everybody having a car and a home and clothes and all that stuff. But I, I see a lot of preachers doing it today, and they're talking about it, and it seems like it's happening every weekend that they're talking about it. And I know that the, the pastors have to take care of their churches, and you know they have to pay for expenses and this and that, but it just seems like we need more of the meat in the church and less of a town about a prosperity, how we need to build this and build that. And I know we're trying to help out the poor, you know, by getting different donations or missions or what have you. But I, to myself, if I wanted to listen to that, I could just stay at home and, and hear that to all the different TV evangelists out there. Mm -hmm. And to go to church on a Sunday and not hear the, the meat, that, that hurts me inside my own spirit because I prefer the meat. And I know there's some out there that need the milk and they need to be taught the milk. And I understand that. But we're in the last days here and not, nobody right. knows when it's going when the Christ is going to return but i think we need to be prepared now that's right and we need to be prepared to know what revelation says it's going to be happening that's right to the people and i think the pastors of different churches need to start to step up and start preaching that instead yes. of preaching about prosperity that's right. all the time that's right that's because right. you have a lot of people that just can't afford to pay you you know, the Lord says to bring your tithes in, 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 into the offering. But he's not only talking, he's bringing all, a third, a th was it a third of all your, uh, the tithe uh, into the storehouse or, or a third of all your. Well, what what's you this? It says uh, the Old Testament, I think it said about 10 percent. And then the New of Testament. Of all, right? Yeah. It said basically uh, what you make. Yeah. yeah. And what my thought right. is that, that doesn't only just mean money. Yeah. That means your time. Mm. That means that clothes, that those coats have been sitting, those dresses have been sitting in your closet for the last 20 years that you haven't used. Yeah. And there's different ways of tithing. I'm sure I'm, I'm saying that. Don't get me wrong. I think that you need to take care of churches, but I don't think you need to be talking about it every week and expect, and then and, and, and filling those pews in, in, in regards of not talking about revelations. I think it's important to know what's going on in the last days. Yes. And I just see a lot of that happening in the churches today. And I just shake my head because I know people need meat and they don't need the fat anymore. Mm. Mm. And, uh, you know, we just need to start rechecking ourselves. And, and if we're anything, we're going to look out for people. I think we should be looking out for the poor. What's your thoughts on it, brother? Well, you know, I, I agree. I mean, like, I think, I think uh, some of these uh, churches, um, they get kind of carried away as far as the prosperity mm. message on that. Mm. 
And don't get me wrong, you know, I mean, yeah, you know, I would like to have money. Yeah. Send, send some money our way, you know, <laughs> but what, what, what's happening, I think, brother, I think there's a lot of people kind of taking advantage Amen. of that. Amen. And I don't think you have to be, you know, like uh, mention it every week, you know, Amen. let's, you know, bring some money and stuff like that. But, Amen. I, you know, I, I just think it's getting kind of carried away. You Amen. know, I think, uh, we, um, you know, we've got a lot of TV evangelists saying that they're pressuring people. I know mm. there's bills and stuff like that mm. that they have to get paid. But, you know, you're talking about putting a lot of pressures. And then, uh, there, you know, then I can go on to the stories on that where, where these people are driving like, um, you know, um, what is it? Uh, Bentleys. Bentleys. And, yeah. and, <laughs> and, 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 and million dollar well, planes know. and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, one of the well, things that comes to my mind, I know, you, don't get me wrong, I know when you go to see different people at different venues and you want to see them at a different, uh, uh, you know, places of, of interest, like at, at concerts and stuff, and you're watching them for the first time and they're, they're telling you about Jesus Christ. And then they, then you, they, then you go out of this when they're done after an hour talking about Jesus Christ, talking about different things that they, they have on their heart. They have books for you to buy on, on when you walk outside the door, mm. and these and these tables are full of books all the time. Yeah, and, and I mean, I understand. Don't get me wrong. I understand that people need to make money, but how much do you need to make? Mm. Do you, how much do you really need to make? Mm. You know, I, I look at different people through the. Uh, I look at, at, at the the Vatican, and I see that situation. There's a lot of money in gold and. And stuff, you know, that, that's money. I mean, you if you sold all that stuff, just think how many people you could feed the poor. Mm. Mm. And I know a lot of good churches out there are really given to the poor. And I know the ones that are because, you know, I've seen many. I've seen a lot of them that I did uh, research on. And they are truly giving to the poor. Mm. But I do see a lot of them that I, that I run and in, in, in come, come in contact with daily or during the week where they're giving just to themselves and their situation. And they may say, yeah, but we're making this bigger and this and bigger and better and better. You know, but I don't think the Lord wants us really to do that. I think he wants us to take care of what we have and take care of the poor where they're at. Hmm. Now, some may say, no, well, you know, we're building this for the poor. Well, that's great. That's great if you're doing. But I think we have a person on here that you're going to show a little bit later. There, She just said, well, you know, just start at home. And, and there's a different way of loving your, your brother and neighbor and the poor. Hmm. And her name is Sister Teresa. Yeah. And yeah. I, I mean... That's one person I think that, out of all mankind right now, she had it down. Yeah. She knew she had she had the her finger on the pulse of Jesus Christ, mm. and I think we as all as a Christian need to have to try to 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 do that kind of way like she did like Jesus Christ. We need to do it to start doing it the same way, and it's not by just drawing people in just to make just to get the numbers for the church. Mm. It's uh, getting numbers for, for for what's on your heart for the poor. And they need our help more than anything else. But we need to get back to the to the meat of the Bible, not the fat of it. We need yeah. to learn about Revelation, how to take care of our brother that's hurting out there. Yeah. So, brother, what do you say? What do you think? You do you have anything well, else to say before well, we start? Yeah, I, you know, I, I I you know agree, brother. I think <clears throat> I think especially in a circumstance, you know, <clears throat> you know, by chance you uh, watching this broadcast, you know, we um, we pray about our broadcast before you can go on there yes, and right. you know, what the Lord tells us to do. That's we always right. say, Lord, if this is not what you want, that's then right. show us. And lately, what, what the, the Lord's been showing us about what's happening, I mean, with the earthquakes and uh, the, the economy and everything that's happening, these, these are happening, folks. This is real. You know, this is real. That's happening that the news probably not even covering and stuff mm. like that. But we're getting close to the end, folks. Mm. We get very, very close to the end. And and brother, you know you're right. Uh, there's a lot of church, at least churches that I've seen that that have not even talked about Revelation. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know Amen. about Revelation until I read it myself. Amen. You know, I mean, I, you know, I've been a Christian for uh, over 20 years, and I haven't heard once uh, any any preachers talk about the book of revelation at all well, you know what that is brother that if they start talking about revelation in the church they're not going to fill up those pews because that's nobody right. wants to hear about revelation that's right that's right if you talk about prosperity brother you're going to have a flock in there that's right but i think we need to go against the grain and say no we need to talk about what jesus wants us to talk about and that's not just about prosperity he wants us to prepare too that's right that's right. You know, I, I heard a, a pastor tell me not too long ago, he says, you know, 
I know this one church where they, they, they teach, you know, they accept God's will no matter what happens. And I, and I believe myself, I believe the Lord lets us go through different things in our life. I mean, there's a lot of times he'll deliver us. There's a lot of times he'll perform miracles. But I know there's some times that he lets you walk through that, that problem that you have. You know why he lets you walk through it or lets that happen in your life? First of all, he's just to praise him in all things, good or bad. But the reason he lets you walk through those things, so then when other people come into your life that have the same thing, you're going to know how to relate to them. To help them get out of that or who to trust him. And what they're going to tell you is well, how Jesus has done it for them. Just like me. I mean, I went through I went through a lot within finances and money. And the Lord walked me through it. But then he delivered me out of it. In the same way, and that's why he uses me now, when people do walk through that, I be, I'm able to come to him and say, well, listen, this is what the Lord's done for me. And this is how you can apply it to your life if you want to. Hmm. But I do believe the Lord lets us walk through things. We're over here praying desperate. Please get me out of this. Get me, get me out of this. Get me out of this. And sometimes he just doesn't answer your prayer. He goes, no, you need to walk through it. Mm. Just like Jesus did. Sure, people will tell me, yeah, but it was finished on the cross. Yeah, you're right. It was finished on the cross. But to go deeper with the Lord and understand the secrets that he has in his heart, if you'll walk with him, he'll show you more. Mm. You know, sometimes, brother, I think also that, uh, have you noticed that, uh, I, and I made this saying before one time, is is that, uh, <clears throat> you know, like, uh, people only come to church when they need mm. something. When, when things are going bad, mm. and that's when, when people come to church. Mm. I mean, that's in my orgy when, uh, when, when people come to salvation and know Jesus, is, is when something bad happens. They don't come to church when things are going good, mm -hmm. you know. When 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 things are being mad and everything, that's that's when they say, "Well, you know, we don't need God." And you know, brother, when I was talking to a, a missionary mm -hmm. uh, that went to Japan, you know, mm -hmm. and and he was telling me how hard it is to preach the gospel in Japan. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> and I asked him, "So why is it?" You know, I took him inside. I told him, "So why is it so hard?" And he said, "The reason why." Is because they're so set financially, you know, mm. they're 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 good financially on that. But now, that was before the earthquake, folks. That was that was before the earthquake mm. when they had that stuff. And now now they've got the, you know, when they had the earthquake, they had a lot of people. Uh, they call it deep population that happened there. A lot of people died. A lot of people lost their land. And now they have the uh, Fukushima thing, you know, with the power plants and and uh, radiation happening and all the stuff happening. And, and so now people are coming to the Lord, you know, and I'm not saying, you know, that, uh, <clears throat> you know, we, we want to believe for bad things to happen. So people come in. No, mm -hmm. of course not. Mm -hmm. You know, but I'm just saying in reality, people come to the Lord, come to when Jesus, when they, when they have a problem, when they have a problem and, and uh, could it be folks? I mean, just, just put this in the back of your mind right now. Just could it be maybe all these things that are happening is uh, for a reason, yeah. but that's all I'm going to say. What, what? No, I think we should get to the next thing that we <laughs> need to talk about. This has to, this, the first video it has to do about, uh, is the, the was, you know what the guy's name is? I forgot his name. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, uh, the person name is, is, um, his name is uh, Lindsey Williams, and he's he's now a pastor, uh, and he was part of the government, and uh, he's uh, has been up in that higher up of it, and he talks about the elite and all the things that, that are happening. Was, in, was he involved in financial uh, yeah. the aspects of yeah, the financial he, institutions and stuff? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think with what you're about to see, it's going to really uh, open your eyes to a lot of things that we, we found out. And, and and take this to heart because this is not from a prophetic uh, thoughts and everything. This is from people that that you pay your your tax earned dollars to, and they're telling you what's what's going to be happening or what this is what they what they say that's going on right now. Isn't that right? Yes. Okay. Exactly. So we can hit it and we okay. can show you right now. Recording, and it was done on May the eighth at four thirty three p.m. in the afternoon of twenty twelve. Now, the reason this is so significant is because I had been told by, and please folks, let me help you if at all possible to believe there positively is a group of people on the face of the earth who control the world. 
Uh, this Nothing ever happens by chance. This was planned a long time in advance. They know what they're going to do next because everything is planned behind closed doors before it ever happens. And recently I was given a formula as to what was going to take place, and I was utterly amazed because it had to do with the derivative market, not the stock market, not what's taking place in Europe. With now, we want, to, we want to show the definition of what derivative means. Brother, could you read that to him and tell him what it means? Okay. Deliver, um... Derivative. <laughs> derivative <laughs> means. Okay. In an investor's uh, mindset, it, this is what it means uh, as soon as I close this out here. Okay. What it means, it's a financial market that deals with trading of deliver, uh, derivative whatever that he said derivative derivative <laughs> that can be traded through futures and over the counter no what they're talking about over the counter that can mean anything that you buy over the counter we're talking about food a loaf of bread mm. medicine your tires your computer we're talking about these types of things that you'd go to the store and say i want to buy that that's what they're talking about over the counter so we can go further on with that though okay. but that's what derivative parts of it the euro but it had to do with the derivative market and they said that the first indicator that we will have of something drastically taking place in the financial world will be a crack that will come on the, in the derivative market i had not the slightest idea when stan and i made this emergency cd on may the 8th I had not the slightest idea how quick it was going to happen. I'm not a prophet. Uh, this comes directly from the elite themselves. And I had been told that probably the next thing we would see happen would be something major take place in the derivative market. Well, it did. In fact, it happened on Friday, May the 11th. Now, understand that Stan and I made that CD on May the 8th. And three days later, on May the 11th, which was Friday of last week, after the Wall Street bell, J.P. Morgan, the, the largest brokerage house in the country, J.P. Morgan announced that they had just lost $2 billion in the derivative market. Wow. This is drastic. In fact, uh, I'm quite sure they waited until after late in the afternoon to announce anything like this or it would have caused major repercussions in the stock market. So as a result, uh, when I heard this, I realized that I had just been told only a few days earlier that the first thing we were going to see whenever the elite were getting ready to allow something major to happen in the financial world is that we would see a crack in the derivative market. Now, let me say at this point, this is only a crack. This is only the tip of the iceberg. This is not the event that will bring. There's so much exposure right now in the derivative market. Well, now let me read you what exposure we have. And by the way, if for any reason you are not familiar with derivatives, please do a crash course on derivatives immediately. Amen. They're very complicated financial instruments. Nearly every major, well, I guess every major bank in America is involved in them. Mm. Government pension funds, private mm. pension funds, uh, everything imaginable is involved in derivatives. And they yet are, are probably the most precarious gambling instruments. And you heard me correctly. Uh, going to Las Vegas would be mild compared to what the derivative market is. Wow. Now, the control of currencies made the statement just recently, and I'll give you the actual facts. The Comptroller of Currency says that the two big-to-fail banks, and you know approximately who those are, are exposed to derivatives in the following manner, uh, to the following amount, I should say. J.P. Morgan Chase is exposed right now to $70.1 trillion in derivatives. This is mind-boggling. You understand that our national debt is only $15.1 trillion. J.P. Morgan Chase, who has been bailed out by the Federal Reserve, along with Citibank, Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, and all the rest, listen to their exposure in the derivative market, which is no more than a glorified Las Vegas. 
Right. Except practice by the multi-billion millionaires. Okay, J.P. Morgan Chase is. Ex so you know, we're just just showing you, like you said, the tip of the iceberg. Of what's what's happening? And there's billions of dollars, of, if not trillions of dollars, are being lost. Well, the next video that we wanted to talk to you about was it would be having to do with Sister Teresa. Isn't that correct, brother? Yeah. And this was to show you the other side of what, what she had says what we need to do. Instead of being investing in all these kinds of I think we need to invest in people now, in the poor, the people that need it. Because how can we love God whom we don't see? St. John says, how can you say that you love God who you don't see? If you do not love your neighbor whom you see, Jesus said, I was hungry and you gave me to eat. Hungry not only for bread, hungry for love, for the word of God, for the tender concern of somebody. Naked, I was naked and you clothed me, not only with a piece of cloth. Nakedness is the loss of the beautiful human dignity of the child of God, the dignity that have been created to love and to be loved, the dignity of the beautiful virtue, purity, that we keep our purity pure, that we keep our chastity chaste, that we keep our virginity virgin. This is a nakedness, and that is lost. I was homeless, and you took me in, not only for a house made of bricks, but my homeless, unwanted, unloved, a throwaway of society. But today we have right here in our country, we see the poor people, we see the young people with that disease, unwanted, unloved, a throwaway of society. Are we there to be that love, that kindness, the thoughtfulness to them and share with them the terrible pain, the terrible feeling of terrible loneliness. Be a throwaway. Have no one to be somebody to somebody. This is the nativity of Jesus. Being poor, being born as a poor. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. So what we wanted to show you here was the correlation between having so much money and having nothing. And I think we, as, as, as a human beings on this earth, we need to start helping the poor out. And you may say, because, oh, well, yeah, but if we make more money, we can help the poor out. No, just where you're at right now, what you have, use what you have right now to give. You don't have to go out and make, make more and more. more. You, the Lord wants you to use what you have right now. He says not to worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow has its own problems. Worry about this day only. Not tomorrow, because it has its own problems. And I think we need to do, we have that kind of mindset to start helping the poor in this area. And, you know, it's fine and great, and I believe we all should give our tithes. We should all, uh, in fact, we should give more than 10%. That's the way I feel. But the Lord just gave us a small mandate to go by, because he, I, I believe that he knew how tough it was going to be. But he just doesn't mean about money, okay? He means about your time. He means about the effort that you give in different areas of your life. So when we bring into the storehouse, we're bringing everything that we are. And I think that's important to understand. And I believe that we need to get back to Revelations because that's so important.
equipment to know how to take, at the, uh, take care of things at the end times. Because money's not going to be worth anything when the, when the, when the excuse the expression, expression, when the so-so hits the fan. Because when it hits the fan, we're going to have to depend on one another. Mm. Not on money, not on paper, but one another. Getting a place to go. Getting somebody that has water. Getting somebody that has some food. Somebody has some kind of a, a makeshift uh, fire that they can they can build a stove on. Make a make makeshift stove, a generator. Whatever it takes, we have to pull together. Because if we don't, we're going to sit there and we're going to suffer. What's your thoughts, bro? Well, brother, I think you're right because there's there's things are happening, you know, and uh, you know we I've been covering the earthquake so much since since I guess when we started the mm -hmm. stuff, but uh, the book of Revelation is is basically happening. You know, you may not think so, but it is happening. Okay, uh, with the earthquakes rapidly, that's ha increasing with with uh, Latest is, is the the radiation that's happening that's killing all of our food supply in the mm, ocean. Mm. Um, you've got a, a meteor that's coming, meteors that are happening. Mm -hmm. We have all these things that are happening in the book of Revelation that's happening. Matthew, I believe, 24 mm, talks about. Mm. And here we are. I think that the church, as far as the church, you know, maybe I'm preaching to myself, but uh, we need to get ready. We need to. Instead of trying to build our houses, Amen. we need to be prepared. Amen. Because I'll tell you something, the government is. Mm. The government's prepared. I don't know mm. about you people, but they are prepared. Mm. And they know when the things are about to hit. And uh, um, one thing, like that video, um, I was trying to find that one clip, but, but he did mention that there are key people in the world that know exactly when things are going to happen mm. when they're going to happen it's all been planned out mm. and um and we're still fighting amongst ourselves regarding this whole thing you know i think if jesus jesus was here today in the flesh you know uh i think he'd be helping the poor i think he'd be you take him to, you know if he's in a hospital he's going to probably raise everybody from the dead from the hospital he you know, was sick. The, the, the only problem with that, brother, is, and I, and I believe 100% what you're saying, but I think if he came back again, we'd crucify him again. Yeah, that's true. You know why? Because we couldn't understand or comprehend what he was trying to do. That's right. I mean, as, as, as sad as that is to say, I believe that's what would happen again. Mm, that's right. You know, and the Lord just keeps on giving me the scripture to say, this is for somebody out there. My people suffer for the lack of knowledge. Mm. 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 Well, I think we're about into our, our close of our show, but we'd like to leave you with one thing. Did you bring up that scripture, brother? And uh, you know, I just wanted to bring this up and I'll read it out and uh, and we'll leave with the show in here. Where's, where's it at? Uh, for I was hungry. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. Naked, you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry, and feed you, or thirsty, and give you something to drink? And when, would, when did we see you as stranger, invite you in, or naked, and clothed you? When did we see you sick, or in prison, and come to you? The king will answer, and say to them, Truly, I say to you, to, extent, to the extent that you did it to one of these brothers of mine, even of the least of them, you did it to me. And so... You gotta read this part too, bro. I'm sorry, there's more to, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. And then he will also say to those on his left, Depart from me, accursed ones, into the eternal fire, which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, you gave me nothing to eat. 
I was thirsty, you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they said, they say to themselves, also will answer, Lord, when did you see you hungry, or thirsty, or stranger, or naked, or sick in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I say unto you, to the extent that you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did, you did not do it to me. These will go away into the eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. So, I'm sorry, I missed up that, that oh, the last one. Oh, but that's, I, I like think that it's, <laughs> that, yeah, without that, it would have been a problem there. But oh. I think it's so important to understand that, uh, are we, you know, the thought that comes to my mind right now, but are we our brother's keeper? Mm. We are. Mm. I remember that's what God told Cain. That's right. When he killed him. Mm. He, go, he goes, Where, where's your brother? And Cain goes, am I my brother's keeper? We are his, oh. our brother's keeper. Oh. Well, you know, brother, I mean, that last part of the scripture there is, uh, that's what Jesus said. That's right. He said, basically, depart from me, you cursed ones. And the Lord's saying, cursed. True. We've got to change our priorities here. Yeah. We have them upside down. Oh. If you want to see things change in our country or, in, or throughout the world in any other country, we need to get on our knees, ask the Lord for forgiveness, and ask Him to change our hearts. Once we ask Him to change our hearts, I believe He'll start healing our land and ourselves. But I don't think we're ready for that. I don't think we're ready. There's a lot of us hiding our heads in the sand. We'll let somebody else take care of that. Meanwhile, all our brothers and sisters are dying around us. When we get to heaven, the Lord's going to just shake his head and go, why? I give you all kinds of opportunities to help people out. Why? Why did you let that happen? And folks, you don't, you don't have to make a ministry trip to go across the world. You could do it in your backyard. You could do it in your home. That's right. Anyway. Yeah. We just bless you. We bless you. We bless, bless you. you.